Hey, I am Latha Christie. I am working as a scientist. I am from Bangalore. I have completed my master's and PhD in aerospace engineering from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. After my bachelor's in electronics and communication from Tamil Nadu, I am passionate about two subjects. One is science, and the next one is how to help those who are struggling and oppressed. So I have written two books, one on abuse and domestic violence, the other on the intersection between science and religion, beyond the boundaries of science exploring the cosmic story. The cosmic story is so interesting to me. God and science, are they mutually exclusive? Or as a scientist, can I believe in God? If you say science and the faith in God, are mutually exclusive they say on two reasons the first they believe that science is based on evidence whereas faith in god is not having evidence at all but the christian faith what we believe is based on evidence it's rational because the god we worship is real he is good and he's worthy of our confidence the second reason they say that God and science are mutually exclusive, it's because they believe that today's miraculous tomorrow's technology. What do I mean by that? Today might be some of the things that we think that as the act of God or supernatural may be covered by tomorrow's technology. So the God that is introduced into the gap of the scientific knowledge is later closed because of the advance in science. So that's what their argument. But I would like to say there are a lot of real gaps in science and we have a lot of scientific mysteries. And the God of the Bible is not only the God of the gaps, but he is needed to run the whole universe and sustain it. Let me present before you a few arguments to show that science and faith in God are not mutually exclusive. Firstly, why do you see order everywhere? Just look at the laws of nature, the laws of electromagnetism, the laws within the world of atom, the laws of motion and the laws you can see around us, the laws of gravitation are all having beautiful mathematical relationship. Where does this beauty of mathematics come from? Why is there that is an order everywhere? If you are a scientist, you cannot think that the universe came out of meaningless jumble of odds. Looking at this order, Alan Sandage, the father of astronomy said, this order cannot come out of chaos and there has to be some meaningful principle behind it, an organizing principle behind it. Just think of it, if you see an order, there should be a purpose behind it. If there is a purpose, there should be some designer behind it. Without an intelligent designer, you cannot see the order. The fine tuning necessary for life to exist on this planet. Astrophysicists say that the four forces of nature, the laws of gravity, electromagnetism, the strong and weak nuclear force started just one trillionth of a second after the Big Bang. And now you alter a little of any of these forces, the whole universe would collapse. You know the ratio between the strong nuclear force and the electromagnetic force, it, it is just altered by one part in one followed by 19 zeros, the whole universe would collapse. Fascinating. Stephen Hawking was puzzled at this fine tuning. He said, why did the universe expand at nearly this critical rate of expansion that even now 10,000 million years later it's still expanding at the same critical rate if the rate of expansion of the universe is just changed by one part in one quintillion the whole universe would have collapsed instead of expanding Fred Hoyle looking at this order his atheism was shaken his this fine-tuning he was wondering he said that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics chemistry and biology. Where did this fine-tuning come from? Who fine-tuned it? That should be a fine-tuner if there is a fine-tuning. So this is my another argument. 
Next, why is there something rather than nothing? The universe has a beginning. The universe has a story. The story of the universe started at its beginning. But how did it start? It started from nothing. And do we have any clue about this story? No. Until a few billionth of a second after the Big Bang, no one knows how the universe started. Stephen Hawking and Einstein and many other scientists were trying to unify these four fundamental forces to find what happened at the beginning. But all of them died without finding this theory of everything. Stephen Hawking even was astonished and he said, even if there is one unified theory, what is that that breathes fire into this equation and make them to explain this universe? Yes, what is that that breathes fire? Can you imagine if there is an effect that should be a cause? So who is the cause of the universe? The cause cannot be part of the universe. The cause has to be transcendent beyond space, time and matter. And now you come to the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. How did chemistry become biology? How did the first cell came into existence? Scientists like Miller and Urey in 1952 tried to make that impossible. They tried to create a single cell and they found it impossible. Even a tiny little cell cannot form on its own. Even you give it billions and billions of years. What is that that brought the first cell into existence? Scientists are now thinking might be from space. Somebody has brought the first cell and from that the whole living organisms come, came into existence. They have found around 5000 exoplanets, the planets that revolve around their own suns. But till now no life has been found. Even if there is life somewhere in the space out, who formed that life? Who brought that life into existence? The, the question is shifting the question one step backward. So there is no answer who started the first life, who brought biology from chemistry. Nobody can do. So this points to an intelligent creator. Next, I would like to talk about the ordered code of DNA. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick got the Nobel Prize because they could crack the code of DNA. They found that it is a double helix structure of DNA that consists of the four lettered code ATGC. And this deciphering the code of DNA brought the beautiful field of molecular biology, transforming the nature of science, ethics and many things else. Because DNA, the complexity of DNA transcends the realm of science and enter into the miraculous. You know why? DNA is not just a molecular code. It is a language. It is so beautifully complicated. It's this complexity is not drawn out of randomness, but it is sophisticated. Looking at the page of this DNA, you just see, you can see the mind of God. That's what scientists say. If you want to read the code of DNA, you need around 31 years to read. You know, this DNA contains the information of who you are, how you are made of. In each, every cell of your body, you have this 3 billion letters of DNA. So you have multiple copies of this 3 billion letters in each cells of your body. Imagine so much information. It's much more than the Encyclopedia of Britannica. So how did this information come from? Where did this information come from? If you want to create information, you need a person, you need someone to create. It cannot come on its own. Matter cannot produce information. So where did this information come from? How did this DNA come from? So all these things points to a purposeful designer. Next, the argument of consciousness. Richard Dawkins says that we are just survival mission, surviving to propagate the DNA. DNA neither knows nor cares. We just dance to its music. And so we are just existing to propagate the selfish molecules called genes. So as per him, 
we are just machines our brains are genetically programmed machines so is it true this materialistic aspect that everything is just material our mind is just material is it true david chalmers when he found the subjective nature of our consciousness of our brain of our thoughts he called it as heart problem why it's a heart problem because no science could explain why do we have the subjective nature where do these emotions come from why do we love beauty why do we love at all so all these subjective experience are not just from brain it is not just material so where did this consciousness come from there should be a conscious creator who brought this consciousness into existence so the order of the universe the fine tuning of the universe the beautiful nature of the things that we see around us why is there something rather than nothing the complexity of dna the origin of first cell the origin of consciousness the origin of information everything points to an intelligent designer a creator so science is not different from faith in god both has to go through god has two channels one he is disclosing through nature next science is the study of nature the second way is disclosing himself through the bible so these two are one is general revelation and one is special revelation and both these things god wanted to reveal himself to us and that is a god we serve so science and faith in god are not mutually exclusive the more we study about science the more we know about the god we serve I studied aeronautics engineering so now I know more about space shuttle the more we know about science the more we know about the god who created science the god who created the whole universe the god who set the planets in its orbits is the same god who gave intelligence to us to do science so science and god are not mutually exclusive you know this belief that science can ultimately explain everything is called scientism So there is no conflict between God and science there is a conflict between two world views the world view that says that science can explain everything and the world view that says that there is a god behind everything theism so this the conflict is between theism and scientism scientism says that everything you can explain through science but can science explain why are we here what's the purpose we are here where did we come from where are we going after we die and what's the meaning of our life how do we distinguish good from bad why do we love people why do we love beauty and why do we love music and why brain transplant has never happened is our brain different from our mind why is there consciousness all these questions science can never answer so science and religion are not mutually exclusive you know when i studied more about cosmology about geology about biology i found through that i became more closer to god and that's when i wrote the book beyond the boundaries of science exploring the cosmic story i found a beautiful order and also i found the first chapter of genesis that sequence given in the first chapter is exactly relating to the modern science that is coming out whatever modern science is exactly the same way our sequence given in the first chapter can be related that's what i have presented and so as a scientist working on science for the past 35 years and working on this study of the universe for the past 5 years i would clearly say that science and belief in god are not mutually exclusive